let's begin with tonight's flip video. Uh, we are still on the subject of volume, and tonight we are going to be looking at finding the volume of composite figures. First thing, what's a composite figure? Well, it's a figure made from two or more geometric shapes. You see these all the time. You may not have recognized exactly what they were. They're geometric shapes. They have to have at least two. For example, this is a composite figure. It has a triangle along with a rectangle along with a, could be a square or a rectangle there. Here you have, if you look at this part right here, a rectangle and on either end you see two triangles. So that's a composite figure. It could be two, um, two rectangles. It could be a rectangle and a square. Uh, etc. We're going to be looking basically at rectangular prisms uh, here in uh, fifth grade. All right, but let's look at finding the volume uh, when you have a figure that has more than one geographic shape. Now, generally, to find the volume of a composite figure, you need to break it apart. You can't look at it all at once in one figure. You find the volume of each individual section and then you add that section up with this section or if there's three sections you add all three of them up. Here's an example. This is a figure. You can tell that before we can figure anything out exactly as to what its volume is, we have to break it apart. Well, a very logical place to break it apart would be right here. Make this one section here and make this one section here. So you've got one rectangular prism here from here up and this whole bottom layer right here is a rectangular prism. We try to section it off in logical places like you wouldn't put dotted lines here and make this apart and then this thing right here over another one. That would not be a logical thing to do. Now, you could break apart the figure at the dotted lines to make two rectangular prisms. You will still find the length, the width, and the height, okay, because that's the formula that you need uh, to do a rectangular, uh, for volume, actually, whether it's a rectangular prism or not. So you will find the length, the width, and the height of each prism. Well, let's look at section A here. We know that right here, this is one inch in length. That's it. It tells you it's one inch. So, one inch. The height. Now, you may say, how would you get five here when it says six here? Good question. This says it's one inch. So, if this section is one inch, if I take one away from six, I will get five. And I have to think logically like that to make this work. If I don't, I could come up with really anything, and that's not what you want to do. The width is three inches. If it's three inches down here, it's three inches here. So the width is three inches. So then I figure out what my volume is from that. One times five is five. Five times three is 15 cubic inches. Now let's look at letter B, this section. We know that the length, it's this part here at the bottom. We know that the length is 10 inches. We know that. The height is one inch. It tells us that. The width is three inches. It tells us that. And we are just looking at this bottom rectangular prism. So the length is 10, the height is one, the width is three. So 10 times one is 10. 10 times three is 30 cubic inches. Now what we do is we add both of them together. We add the 15 plus the 30 and we get 45 cubic inches. That is way easier to do than trying to determine what the volume is of the whole thing without breaking it down. You really need to break it down in a logical manner. All right, here's example two. This figure, all right, it's got all of the necessary um, measurements there. First, find a logical place that you can section it off, all right? I would think here. We could make this A, 
we could make this B. But that would be illogical. You wouldn't do it right down the middle like that. That wouldn't really make sense. I've labeled my two parts. Next, it says find the dimensions of each prism and calculate its volume. All right, let's look at section A. Well, the length obviously is seven centimeters, so we're going to put seven centimeters. The width, how wide is it, is six centimeters. And then what is its height? It tells you here that the height is one centimeter. All right, uh, let's look at letter B. We know that the length of letter B, if it's three centimeters here, it's going to be three here. So three centimeters. All right, what is the width? It tells you here. It is two centimeters. Now, it doesn't say how tall it is, but you'll notice there is no indication that it's any taller here than it is here. So if this is one centimeter, then that's one centimeter. So we're going to put one centimeter here. All right, let's figure up our volume. We know that 7 times 6 is 42. 42 times 1 is 42 cubic centimeters. Here, 3 times 2 is 6. 6 times 1 is 6. So this is 6 cubic centimeters. We're going to add them together now. 42 plus 40, excuse me, 42 plus 6 is 48 cubic centimeters. So it says last add the two numbers together to find the total volume of the whole figure. So 42 plus 6 would be 48, and because it's cubic centimeters, we're going to write cubic centimeters. Much easier to do when you section it off. Let's try this. Hmm. Noticing from this figure, this side is just as tall as this side. All right. We can see where it's shaded in. This is three feet in case you can't see it. Where would be a very logical place to section this off? I would think here. I could make that be A and this would be B. I could make that B and that A. I just chose it because this one up at the top. That's all. All right. What we're going to do now is find the dimensions of each of the sections. That's what you need to do after you section it off. You can't figure out volume until you know what the dimensions are. All right. Of section A. The length, how long is it? It says three feet. So we're going to put three feet. What is the width of it? Four feet. If it's four feet here, it's four feet here, it's four feet here, it's four feet here. It's the same. It doesn't show any other measurement. It doesn't show any other um, change in like altitude or width. All right. And then the height of it, it clearly shows right here that the height is two feet. Let's look at letter B. That's this section right here at the bottom. The length, obviously, is nine feet. The width is four feet. The height, how tall it is, is two feet. Let's figure out what the volume is of each of the sections. Three times four is twelve. 12 times 2 is 24, and this would be cubic feet. All right, that's for section A. Section B, 9 times 4 is 36. 36 times 2 is 72. And this would be 72 cubic feet. Now, we add them together to find out what the total amount is. So 72 plus... 24 is 96, and this would be 96 cubic feet. This entire figure would be 96 cubic feet. If this was one foot squares, I could stack 96 of them into this figure, just like we've been talking about in class. 
All right, last of all, practice problems. I did a little work on this for you to help you. Here's the practice problems. We have all of the measurements here. I've already sectioned it off for you, all right? We've got section A, which is this part here. We have section B, which is this part right here. What you are going to do tonight is to come up with the length, the width, and the height for A, and then in B, the length, the width, and the height for B. Figure up what the volume is for each, and then at the end, add the volume for section A with the volume for section B, and that will give you the total volume for the figure. If you are confused, there's this thing that looks just like this. There's a figure that looks just like this earlier in the video, and you're welcome to go and replay it and figure out how it is that we sectioned it off and how we determined what the different dimensions were. All right? Good luck, and please let me know tomorrow if you have any questions. Thanks.